What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about something that Microsoft just did that I think is a little bit interesting but also maybe a little bit confusing. They just launched a dedicated standalone co-pilot application on Android and what this does is it just simply fires up what used to be known as Bing Chat. Of course now it's been rebranded as Copilot. Maybe the coolest thing about this is that you can tick that box and you are now using Chat GPT 4 and this is something that is free for you to use. You don't even have to sign in although I have and that is definitely pretty cool. Now what's the confusing part about this? Well if you go into their Bing application, let me go ahead and make this full screen really quickly on my Pixel Fold, you'll see that there is a co-pilot button down there. And if I click on that, guess what? It's going to do the exact same thing. It's literally the exact same thing. If I fire up Microsoft Edge, their web browser, and I close the thing to take it out of tablet view, guess what? Down there at the very bottom, if I click on that co-pilot button, we are in the exact same screen once again. So they've sort of put this in several different places and it's the exact same thing. So I guess the confusing part for me is if you're using the Bing application, why would you then install a standalone Copilot app? It just seems like they're sort of replicating this functionality over and over and over, which is maybe a little bit strange. But at any rate, Copilot is here and you can do some pretty interesting stuff with it. Personally, I would say that my favorite thing to do with this is to grab a URL and then let's jump back into Copilot. What I'm gonna do is let's switch over to the keyboard mode. Unfortunately, that button was in the way. And we're gonna do this. Summarize this web page. Paste in that URL and let's send this. And I believe this should work pretty well. It should be able to grab that web page and then give me a summary of what is being said. And you can see here that it is reading that information out. And like I said, kind of just summarize and give me a shorter version of that web page that I can more quickly digest. And you can see it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it is doing a pretty decent job. We'll wait till this is done. At this point, I kind of want to contrast with another option, something else I've also been using, which is Google's Bard. Let's go to bard.google.com. And of course, this does not currently have a standalone application. You're going to run it inside your web browser. We'll do the same thing here. Summarize this web page. We'll paste that in. And Bard will be able to do the exact same sorts of things. I find that a lot of the time Bard is actually a little bit quicker. That was a shorter result than what we got from Copilot, maybe a little bit less detail. So definitely something to compare and contrast there. If we do go back to Copilot, though, there is something else that it can do that Bard can't, at least not right now. We're going to have it actually make an image, which is something that I haven't tested on this Copilot standalone app, but it should work just fine. You can see that it's typing that out. We'll skip ahead just a second until that's done. And there you go. You have your series of images there. Let's click on that one. And there is an image that it generated with a Bard. I don't believe it has any sort of image generation. Generate an anime style image of the Appalachian Mountains. And so what it actually did is it's giving me instructions on how to like paint this picture. It's not actually generating it itself. So that's a little bit of a problem. One thing I love about Bard is that if I click on this little hamburger menu, I can expand this section called Recents, and it's actually going to give me all of these past conversations that I've had. So I can quickly jump back into that and kind of pick up where I left off. For Copilot, you're going to select the three dots up there, and then Chat History will be there as well. Now, if you want to kind of make the Bard experience a bit more similar, you can click on the little three dots up here, and if you want to, you can add this to your home screen, just like that. And now you're going to have a little shortcut to Bard, but the problem is when you click it, it's just firing it up inside your web browser. So it's not like the best thing in the world. It's not like a proper progressive web app, a PWA that's going to run in its own window. So I don't find that super useful. I wind up just browsing there in my, it just on, in Chrome, I just type it into the address bar. So I do wish that they would release something like this for Bard. I think it would be really nice. Personally, I have no real use for the Bing app at that point because this is doing exactly what I wanted from the Bing app without the other stuff on top. So maybe that's the point of this application existing for people like me. Of course, you could open up Copilot and then you could grab your web browser and have them 
them side by side. So maybe you're, you know, using it kind of like Copilot is on your computer where you've got it on one side, although I guess on your Windows computer, it'll be swapped around that way because Copilot is on the right side of the screen. But you could be referencing text and then, you know, dragging text into the box and so forth. That should work just fine, actually. Maybe that doesn't work on this app. That's a bummer. Well, you could still copy and paste it, but still, you kind of see what I mean. You could use it truly as a co-pilot on a tablet-style device like this, using it to reference things and answer questions, which is something I've done a lot with BARD. And I used to use Copilot a lot for that as well. Maybe having this app will make it a bit more enticing to me. So we're going to kind of compare the way that it answers some questions. We're going to ask what the forecast for today is. Can I actually click on both at the same time? No, I could not. We'll see which one manages to get the answer out first and which one gives better details. That's actually really, really close in terms of uh, starting. Bard definitely got it done quicker. And it looks like Bard has quite a few details. Maybe... Copilot is going to catch up and have similar detail, but it is definitely going a whole heck of a lot slower than Bard was. You can see the different answers there. I think both did a pretty good job. Bard was definitely the quicker of the two. Oh, we have a graphic down here too, though. That's pretty nice. I like that. Let's ask it another question here, this time asking it, is the Pixel Fold a good device? We'll see what kind of answer it gives us there. Again, really similar in terms of you know who started first. But BARD is already done, whereas you can see Copilot with GPT-4 is sort of typing it out as we go. So definitely some big differences there. I like what BARD does a lot, but it's also really important to remember if we start a new chat here that what this thing can do is a bit deeper. Make a pop song about a seahorse named Bubbles. I mean, this thing can generate images. It can generate songs, apparently. Unless, of course, these are just the lyrics to the song. Okay, I thought this was actually going to generate a full song. I guess it's just the lyrics. But still, Copilot can do a little bit more with that image generation stuff. I think when it comes to text-based stuff, Bard is probably a little bit quicker. But... Lots to like on both sides. So guys, I'd love to know if you've already integrated an application like this into your workflow. Are you going to install this co-pilot application and give that a try? Maybe you're already kind of dedicated to Bard. Let me know in those comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.